Excellent. Thanks, Tricia and Christine and uh, Captioner and everyone who's helping out. Uh, my name is Cody. I use the pronouns he, him. I am, let me advance the slides here. I am the journalism librarian at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities on the Dakota lands. And I'm going to open it up to the other folks who are going to be co-presenting and helping with the discussion here. Phil, do you want to say hello? Yes, thanks, Cody. Hi, my name is Phil Reed. I'm at the University of Manchester in the UK. I'm a teaching and learning librarian, brackets data specialist, which is always a mouthful. We do like long titles in libraries, I think. And I'm on the Library Carpentry Advisory Committee with Cody as well. Cool. And I think Tim has hopped in. Hello. Hey, uh, thank you, Cody. Uh, yeah, I'm Tim Dennis. I'm the director of the the Library Data Science Center at UCLA, and I'm on the um, I'm the the interim chair for the library um, curriculum committee. So, and I work with Cody and Phil on that committee, which is like I guess a separate committee from the advisory group. Cool. That's right. Yeah. So, those of us who are on the curriculum advisory committee had talked about having this session. Let me advance the slides here. So the basic idea today is we'll talk a little bit about um, sort of the library carpentry curriculum in general, the curriculum advisory committee and the role of those groups, just sort of an introduction to um, how things are flowing through those groups, how lesson maintainers are connecting. Um, that should be pretty short, just like 10 minutes or so, I'll, I'll be sort of speaking here. And then the main session really, um, we wanna break out if depending on who's here into a couple different groups and to have conversations about the library carpentry curriculum. So if you're a lesson maintainer or an instructor or a learner um, helper who's really interested in that curriculum, we'll have a conversation about that. And then if there are folks from other curriculum advisory committees or who are interested in conversation about um, sort of those groups and how they work with lesson maintainers in a more abstract way, um, in terms of, you know, taking into account um, software carpentry, data carpentry and stuff. We, we have some discussion questions for those um, conversations as well. And then we're hoping to bring folks back together. We're going to play that by ear a little bit in terms of timing, sort of share back um, some of the conversation highlights as we go. So in terms of library carpentry curriculum, for folks who are maybe not familiar or a reminder for, for people who've um, done some of this, um, it's a little bit different than software and data carpentry in terms of there are four core lessons, which also sort of includes a really short workshop overview. Um, but there are some more sort of modular lessons there. So there are six extended lessons and some examples. I should go back and tell you about the core. First, the core lessons are intro to working with data, which covers regular expressions, the Unix shell, open refine, and intro to Git. And then these extended lessons are SQL, um, tidy data, web scraping, there's an intro to Python, data for archivists, and R. Um, there's also this top 10 fair data and software things, which the curriculum advisory committee was just discussing with um, the lesson maintainers, and that's one that's been decided to retire. In addition, there are like nine to 10 conceptual lessons. Some of these are listed on the Library Carpentry website, um, some are in the Carpentries Incubator or in other places and not specifically associated with library carpentry, but of interest to um, sort of library worker audiences. Um, so some examples of those, there's one on MarkEdit. Um, there's a Wikidata lesson, an XML lesson, which I believe is also going to be retired. Um, there's a TEI lesson. Um, which is a text encoding initiative for the non library folks feel free to plug acronyms that I'm throwing out into the chat for, for folks, um, that would be great. There's text and data mining, um, one that we're talking about sort of moving into library carpentry specifically is there's a artificial intelligence for GLAM, which is galleries, libraries, and museums. Um, and there's a DH, a digital humanities lesson as well. And you can check out the, the library carpentry lessons page to sort of get a sense of what's in there. So mostly what we wanted to cover, um, if you're on a curriculum advisory committee or if you're a lesson maintainer who's really engaged in this process, you're probably familiar with this, but just to make sure everyone's sort of on the same page in terms of like who's doing what with the curriculum, the lesson maintainers are still the sort of primary 
um, the folks who are primarily responsible for those lessons in terms of the daily upkeep of lesson content and infrastructure, uh, managing upkeep and contributions, um, making all sorts of small scale modifications to the lesson content on GitHub. And then there's a whole set of sort of areas where they consult with the curriculum advisory committees for their specific area. So in library carpentry um, and some so examples. <laughs> Sorry, what was that? I Maybe think I... it was an accident. I've no made problem. It. Cool, cool. Just making sure. Um, so some examples of some of the changes that the lesson maintainers would reach out to curriculum advisors for is if they were discussing changing the data set that was behind or, you know, sort of supporting a particular lesson, changing the software, if they wanted to completely remove or reorder episodes, make sort of other major adjustments to the lesson. Um, stuff they would just go ahead and do on their own, though, would be like removing or adding exercises, um, reorganizing material within episodes, adding call out boxes and stuff like that. There's some slipperiness to this, right? But this is a sort of general guidelines. And much of this is taken from, I believe it was Aaron Becker, and I think Toby, or uh, yeah, I think Toby was also involved in these CAC onboarding slides. And so I've, I've taken much of it from there. And I believe we might have both of them here today. So they can feel free to chime in along the way as well. Um, so the curriculum advisory committee role here um, is to give feedback to contributors and lesson maintainers using the Carpentries model. Um, and I can talk about those models if it's helpful to evaluate contributions using the sort of pedagogical model that, that the Carpentries use, which I think most of us are familiar with through instructor training. Um, and then communicating and consulting with maintainers is sort of a core um, goal here, advising on the content of the lesson program as a whole, um, ensuring that lessons are relevant and accurate and changing the life cycle status of lessons. So are these alpha, beta, stable? What constitutes um, sort of changing those life cycle um, marks for each lesson? A few other data details. I think I sort of mentioned this, but most lesson feedback, if you're an instructor, should go to the lesson maintainers, should happen through GitHub as usual. And then hopefully, if larger issues come up, they would sort of get cycled over to the maintainers. And the way that folks can reach out or get cycled to the advisory committee. And the way that that would happen generally might differ a little bit in software and data carpentry. So I won't speak for, for them, but you can reach the library carpentry, carpentry CAC by tagging library carpentry curriculum advisors on GitHub. There's a topic box um, and I have a link if someone wants to add it to the chat, Phil or Tim, to the CAC GitHub repo, you can reach us there. Um, so we'll, we sort of share our minutes there. Um, we'll sort of flag issues that we're working on and try to bring in lesson maintainers as we go. And then just a note that I believe all these curriculum advisory committees were kind of rebooted this spring 2022. So pretty recent. I think we've had three meetings so far. Um, so some of this session, um, for us, I think was just an opportunity to start to connect with lesson maintainers and think about what should we be doing? What are we missing? Um, making sure there's some opportunity for community. And then I believe this is my last slide or two. So what the library carpentry folks have done so far, so we met with that intro to AI for GLAM, the lesson maintainers there. And this is a lesson that's in the incubator it's like a very good potential fit for library carpentry since the audience is explicitly people working in galleries, libraries, archives, and museums. And sort of talked about what's the process look like to move that curriculum into the library carpentry curriculum. And then we've really started to focus on just like reinvigorating the core lesson maintenance and development. And this is all in collaboration with folks, you know, across the carpentries. Um, we started to audit lessons to identify like what work remains to be done, what lessons have a lot of outstanding issues and pull requests, um, what can we do to help the maintainers um, to sort of address those. So we'll probably be reaching out sometime in the next few months to specific lesson maintainers to see can we arrange for a code sprint, how are things going. Um, we've started along that same sort of lesson audit, and Phil could speak more about this as well, to 
flag some lessons that might be up for retirement. And of course, we're going to include a lot of folks. We want to get community feedback about that and sort of make sure that um, we wouldn't, you know, make those decisions lightly. Um, and then also just like making sure our maintainer lists are updated and, and there are active maintainers for all our lessons. So we are going to move into discussion, but I have not kept up with the chat. And also I want to just open it up for Phil and Tim in case there were other things that you wanted to add or sort of annotate along the way. The chat has a mention from Owen about mark edit and what it is and uh, how it's used. And other than that, we just have the links that you've mentioned already. Cool. This is the AC. Cool. So that, is that is really helpful. I'm going to stop sharing because I think we're to the conversation portion here. And how many folks do we have? 25. I think that's probably too many to go around the room. What do you think um, with introductions? Maybe we'll move this to the pad and then do more introductions in the breakouts. I think so. We might be here 25 minutes otherwise. <laughs> okay. Okay. So let's hop over to the ether pad. I see people have already signed in. Yeah, Christine, thank you. You can go ahead 